I'm talking to you today from my surgery. I thought it might be useful to actually go through some cases. I'm gonna trial it as a couple of series. You can give me comments and feedback if you like it. The idea really is to help you understand the thought process behind some of the cases and whether you're suitable or not to have treatment, whether you need extra treatment, and one case in particular that I posted about on Instagram was a guy with a gappy tooth situation. So he had multiple spaces in his teeth and spacing can happen for a number of reasons. One of them could be due to periodontal disease. Periodontal disease is basically advanced gum disease which is irreversible and because you lose bone and you lose gum the teeth drift and kind of move forward. In those cases, you need to go see a dentist, teeth may need to be taken out, you may need implants, you may be able to salvage the teeth, they need to be then orthodontically repositioned. You can have teeth spaces and gaps also because genetically you have small teeth compared to your jaw, so we have what we call a discrepancy in the Bolton's analysis, so we basically do this mathematical equation and work out what the ratios of your teeth should be and if your teeth doesn't comply to that ratio it means you've got small teeth and it shows us where we need to widen them. This case in particular however was because he had a traumatic bite so the way that he was biting and over time meant that his teeth were splaying out advert outwards to try and make his bite more comfortable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you around to the computer with me so we can have a look at the case together. You can let me know, as I said in the comments, if it makes sense, if you like the style. So we're doing it as a little bit of a trial and I can tell you about the treatment that I did. So I'm gonna take you, stay tuned. So here's the gappy case and as you can see, not only does he have gaps, he's got recession where the gums have actually receded. And if we have a look at the smiling shot, it's not so bad, he has a low lip line. Now he hasn't consented to his false face shots being shown, but basically the lower part of his face is overclosed and we has, he has what we call a deep overbite and with a deep overbite, the mouth is overclosed. When we check the inside of the mouth, although many people think this is due to gum disease, which led on to periodontal disease, it wasn't. In fact, what had happened was is that he had a traumatic bite. So if we look at the top and bottom teeth, we can see that the teeth are a little bit crooked, but also there's a lot of enamel wear. So if we go in there, we can see that there's dentine, when the dentine is the more yellow part of the tooth, with a little bit of nerve there. And these teeth have been ground away. So he had a grinding habit, and as a result, his teeth were flaring out. And you can see the side shots here and here as well. If we move things up, his smile will look better. Now, I discussed lots of different cases, but we did a trial smile, so we were able to show him without drilling down his teeth what his teeth could look like. And we can see here that I've added some composite and or some acrylic even from a stent to show him how his smile could change, which obviously has had a massive impact. Now, really important, we took the x-rays just to make sure that there is no gum disease, and I'm gonna show you his x-rays as well. So here are his x-rays, and we can see here that he's got, this is the bone and this is the tooth. So if my hands were the gums and we rip the gums down, the teeth are anchored into the bone, we can actually see he's got pretty good bone levels. And even on the top, he's had a little bit of bone loss, but nothing major. So yes, the veneers are a little bit defective here, by the way, but that's a side note. But really, we can see this is not a gum disease issue. So how did we treat this case? So we removed the old veneers, and then what we did was is that we just refined the preparations of the teeth. They were actually more crowns because they were cut down quite a lot, and I recorded the shade of the teeth underneath. We took several records, and then we put the temporaries on, as we can see here. You can have a look here. So literally from the old photo that I just showed you, I've just moved everything up so that the margin of the tooth starts where there's been the recession and we've just moved everything up. Then we treat the lower teeth later on. But if you have a look at the comparison, you can see that's the before and then moving things up, you can see how much the height has gone up. So then after two to three weeks, the patient comes back and we actually then cement the top teeth. So these are the teeth on day of cementation. We actually cement them under something called a rubber dam. 
Um, a lot of people ask me why I've gone for this kind of shape of teeth. We can see that the teeth are very natural. This patient is a more mature patient. He doesn't want it to be very obvious what he's had done. Notice that we've got like a crack line down there, some translucency down there. That's normal and as part of the aging process. So we incorporate these features to ensure that the patient looks as natural as possible. This blue sheet here is called the rubber dam. I cement my cases under rubber and dam to help with moisture control, to ensure that we're making sure that it is decontamination free as well. So these were the lower teeth. We'd actually prepared them up and this is after the cementation of the lower teeth. And together with the top and bottom teeth, we are here. So really great result compared to what we had before. This is the patient's result. Really lovely, really, really natural. I'll actually show you a retracted shot. Here we go. Yeah, and we can see how great they look. So notice before we're completely closed up, the bite's really deep, whereas here we've opened up the bite a bit and brought everything upwards. And the patient was really happy, but really important to notice how natural the smile is, the quirkiness, the crack lines as well. So you have different situations for different teeth, but ultimately you need to work around what's sensitive for you and your mouth. People ask me, is it really important to reorganize the bite? In a case like this, everything's case dependent, I would say. I didn't reorganize the bite. I raised everything up because his case was a recession case. Rewind if you don't know what I mean. So we kind of took everything up. Now, in some cases, if you've got severe bone loss, lots of trauma in different cases, you may need to organize the bite. But in this case, I decided not to. So I hope this case report has been helpful. As always though, I'm happy to take your comments on board and find out what more you want to look for and what cases may interest you. The case has been stable now for three or four years, which is great. And maintenance involves coming to see me every six months, having a deep hygiene clean every three to four months, brushing every day with an electric toothbrush, flossing and teepeeing. So I hope that helps and why we use nice crack lines and natural things to make the smile look good. Have a great day everyone and see you soon.